Hello friends, let's see the hepatorenal pouch of the Morrison. This hepatorenal pouch of the Morrison, it is situated on the right side below the liver. And as the name suggests, it is between the kidney and the liver. So if we want to understand the boundaries of the hepatorenal pouch of the Morrison, let's see this image. Here in this image, we can see this is the parasagittal section of the abdominal cavity along with the peritoneal cavity just on the right side to the falciform ligament. The falciform ligament, it is the parietal peritoneal layers which are going to start from the umbilicus and reach up to the liver. And this falciform ligament having two layers. So one of the layer on the right side, it is going to diverge and it is going to cover the anterior surface of the liver. So here in this image, this is the right layer of that parietal peritoneum which is going to cover the entry abdominal wall from the inner side, which is just right to the falciform ligament. So when we trace this layer, this layer, it is going to cover the inner aspect of the entry abdominal wall. It is going to cover the undersurface of the diaphragm and it is going to reach up to the lever after forming a band over there. And that, that uh, uh, reflection of this peritoneal layer over the liver, that layer, it is called as a superior layer of the coronary ligament. After forming this superior layer of the coronary ligament, this parietal peritoneum become the visceral and it is going to cover the anterior surface of the liver. It reach up to the inferior border of the liver. And after reaching at the inferior border of the liver, it is going to cover the gallbladder from the in inferior aspect as this section is the right parasagittal section. So we can see the gallbladder just below the liver. And after covering this gallbladder, this uh, visceral layer, it is going to cover the inferior surface of the liver. And as it is going to cover the inferior surface of the liver, it is reflected on the right kidney. So that band of the peritoneum at the posterior surface of the liver that band it is called as the inferior layer of the coronary ligament so after forming this inferior layer of the coronary ligament this visceral layer of the peritoneum it is going to cover the anterior surface of the right kidney and it is going to cover the right colic flexor and going to cover the ascending colon and the sigmoid colon and it is going to merge with the paracolic gutter on the right side. So here we can see the space between the superior layer of the coronary ligament and the inferior layer of the coronary ligament. This space, it is called as the bare area of the liver because it is not going to be covered by any layer of the peritoneal cavity. Now, so here this is the tracing of the peritoneum for the understanding of the hepatorenal pouch of the Morrison. So let's see the boundaries of the hepatorenal pouch of the Morrison. So when we see the boundaries of the hepatorenal pouch of the Morrison, the anterior boundary, it is formed here. And this anterior boundary, it is going to be formed by the inferior surface of the liver as well as the gallbladder. And that inferior surface of the liver having a quadrate lobe over there. Posteriorly, this hepatorenal pouch, it is bounded by the visceral peritoneum covering the right suprarenal gland, right kidney and the right colic flexor. So this boundary is the posterior boundary of the hepatorenal pouch. Superiorly, this hepatorenal pouch, it is bounded by the inferior layer of the coronary ligament. And inferiorly, this hepatorenal pouch, it is open into the peritoneal cavity and it communicates with the right paracolic gutter as well as with the pelvic peritoneal cavity. And just on the left to this hepatorenal pouch, because this hepatorenal pouch, it is situated on the right side, just left to it, we have epiploic foramina. And through this epiploic foramina, this hepatorenal pouch, it is going to communicate with the lesser sac, or we can say omental bursa. So these are the boundaries of the hepatorenal pouch. Now, what should be the clinical importance of this hepatorenal pouch? When we see this peritoneal pouch which is going to be formed by the visceral peritoneum covering the inferior surface of the liver, 
inferior layer of the coronary ligament as well as the anterior surface of the right kidney right colic flexor and the right suprarenal gland so this pouch it is communicating with the lesser sac through epiploic foramina which is situated just left to this pouch and it communicates with the pelvic peritoneal cavity through the inferior aspect of this pouch because this inferiorly this pouch is open so this pouch is the most dependent pouch of the peritoneum or this is the most dependent space of the peritoneum at the time when the patient is in the sleeping position so let's see one more image so here this is the image where, where we can appreciate this is the hepatorenal pouch which is the most dependent part at the time of the sleeping position why this hepatorenal pouch it is more important because it communicates freely with the lesser sac and if any ulceration is there in the posterior wall of the stomach or the duodenum the infected fluid is collected within the lesser sac or within the omental bursa so if this fluid is infected fluid is collected within the lesser sac it may communicate with the hepatorenal pouch of the morrison through that epiploic foramina and this hepatorenal pouch which is the most dependent part of the peritoneal cavity at the time of the sleeping position the pus may accumulate over there and as this lymphatics of the peritoneum it freely communicates with the lymphatics of the lungs and the pleura so empyema and the lung abscess are more common with the uh, pus collected in the hepatorenal pouch of the morrison so this is one of the clinical important of the hepatorenal pouch now as this hepatorenal pouch of the morrison it is situated just behind the liver and on the right side so it is also called as right subhepatic bursa and it is also present in the supracolic compartment which is on the posterior side on the right side so, so it is also called as right posterior intraperitoneal space of the supracolic compartment so this is all about the hepatorenal pouch of the morrison hope you understand well thanks for watching